while now have been on the brink of a new tropical cyclone. We're still not there quite yet, but it's getting very close indeed. Invest 93p, an area of interest with that label in the Solomon Sea at 10.3 degrees south, 156 degrees east. So there it is right now, 35 mile per hour winds and a pressure of 1000 millibars. The winds now verified by a recent ASCAP pass, moving east-southeast at 8 miles per hour and expected to swing southeastward and is a CDPS stage 4 for Isle Pot, which is on the northern part of uh, New Caledonia, an island offshore. For Tuesday morning, a potential landfall there uh, with wind speeds which could reach the category 3 range. So that is the main uh, basis for a stage 4 on the CDPS along with significant rainfall. Here it is right now as of 1pm local time at least in New Caledonia, NCT, New Caledonian time, December 11th um, and its current position there depicted on the map. So that puts it right now 231 kilometers from Russell Island, that's the southwest, 435 from Honiara, the capital of the Solomon Islands, 443 from Rennell Island to its southeast, 1304 from Isle Pot, and 1728 from the New Caledonian capital, Numea. This storm could produce up to 8 inches of rainfall, that's 200 millimeters expected. Um, and of course could deliver extremely strong winds depending on exactly what happens with its track. Right now uh, that's what we have there, the ATCF system also with 35 miles per hour, the Bureau of Meteorology a little bit more cautious, they're going with 25 right now, although I expect that will start to increase soon. You can see it on the top of your screen there, quickly developing, and those yellows show hurricane equivalent conditions, and then it turns orange, that's category 3 equivalent, and that's the latest GFS run taking it just north of the island of New Caledonia, which is interesting deviation because many previous runs have called for the storm to make a, a direct landfall and cross over the island properly, but you can see there it takes a last minute detour and just skims the northern islands there of the chain and then saunters down towards the southeast uh, a close pass to New Zealand but that eastward shift pushes it away a little bit more than what older model runs were saying. We'll see if that trend continues and here's the rainfall and you can see it engulfs the whole region really very moisture, uh, moist plume of moisture there moving down towards the south with the storm itself um, and you can see that the Highest rainfall amounts will be to the northeast over the Coral Sea, but the area where we're hovering there, that's over New Caledonia, around 7-8 inches of rainfall, which is 150 to 200 millimetres. And further towards the north for some of the islands of the Solomons, around 10 uh, inches possible in some areas. Sea surface temperatures are very warm and that's where a lot of the energy will be coming from. A little bit of a cool spot underneath the system right now because it's been lingering for a while, around 26 degrees Celsius, but it will rise again to 28, 29 on approach to New Caledonia and will remain above the 26 degree threshold until it gets halfway between New Caledonia and New Zealand. Uh, here's the latest satellite imagery. This is infrared showing you the system's development. It's certainly looking the part, uh, its rotation is getting better. What's preventing it from becoming a tropical cyclone at the moment, it would be a depression, uh, is that on the southwestern quadrant, uh, the center isn't yet closed. Here it is on the water vapor imagery, very moist environment. You can see a huge line really of uh, moisture, which extends to the invest in the Pacific, in the Western Pacific, by the way, uh, showing you there on the very northern part of the image. But this system is another one worth tracking and could become a major cyclone threat.